Is this thing on? Hello! That's better. Hey, everybody. <laughs> Welcome back to the Coffee and Carving Show, episode number 86. That's right. 86. 86. Wow. Who would have thunk it? Not I. But here we are, nonetheless. So. Yes, what here we are. Yourself? What have you been up to? What have you been doing? How about let's start off with the weather. Yeah, let's get into that. Why don't let's we? start with the weather before we what you up to. Because, doggone, what a day. Unbelievable. How was it on your end? Nothing like your – well, I'll let you get into that. But we had uh, snow falling last night as I was working on the, the deer project. And I was so happy to see that. I mean, in one sense, I'm like, really? Snow? But then the better – the child in me is uh, loves loves the snow. So I was very happy about that. And then woke up this morning to probably a half an inch or so or, you know, or a few centimeters depending on where you're from. And uh, – you had something else, didn't you? We got hammered last night. Just hammered with snow. Now, let me preface this whole conversation with 20 years ago, mm-hmm. I uh, my mother had this beautiful curly willow tree in her yard, and I always loved this tree. Mm-hmm. And I went and cut about 15 pieces off of it, and I rooted them, and I was planted them, I was planting them all around the house. But the neighbor was a farmer and he mm-hmm. walked over when I was playing them and he goes, what are you doing planting all those weeds? Oh, a horrible tree. And I was all insulted. I'm going, you sucker, you come on my property and tell me I'm planting weeds. These are beautiful curly birch trees. Well, you are the one with the suckers. Yeah, they suckered. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so I was planting these trees and I planted about 15 of them all around it. I got one, I got a row over here. I got them in the front. I got them in the back. I got them everywhere. Needless to say, each one being a curly willow, multi, multi branches, all 10, 12, 14 inch branches now. And, uh, the leaves have not fallen off and uh, we got hammered with wet, heavy snow, probably a foot in uh. total. Uh. And I walked out of the house this morning, and you would have thought a tornado went through my property. Wow. I have days of brush cleanup and branch cleanup. Just They are just snapping and breaking all over the yard. In fact, I went to work early this morning, came back early, and even more had fallen. Came yeah. back at lunch. They are still falling. Wow. And my yard is a disaster. Mm. So crazy old farmer is right <laughs> willows are dirty weak trees and yeah. i'm so upset that my weekend is shot with cleaning up tree branches now yeah. and uh yeah what a disaster it just like well, the, the reason to be fair in your in your words to be fair i love cottonwoods only because they don't grow in my yard in my yard you know, I have heard hundreds and hundreds of people over the years uh, at our shows come up to me and say, what is the wood that you're carving? Oh, cottonwood? Oh, I hate those trees. Those are the worst trees. Yeah. I hate those trees. And it's like, yeah, well, I, I, I don't know why people say that. I love them. And then I, But I know inside, deep inside from the friends who had those trees that they're constantly dropping bark and branches and they're trash trees like willows are. Yeah. See, in the past, willows are dirty. Regardless, lots of little sprigs always falling yep. off and that. But yeah. most of the stuff you can hit with your lawnmower and clean it up, you know. Right. But, uh, yeah, this is this is awful. So yeah. I'm going to be stumping a lot of these trees. It's just they're done. So mm-hmm. anyway, yeah, that heavy wet snow will pull power lines down and pull all kinds of stuff down. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. Well, so hydro flicked on and off like four times today. Wow. So, but yeah. it, luckily it's still on because we're talking, right? Good. But yeah. uh, no, it was it was crazy. But moral of the story, 
I'm the miserable old farmer now, and every time I see someone planting a nice willow, I say, oh, you're planting that dirty old tree for us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like, why are those old people so cranky and have all these negative opinions? Yeah. Maybe because they know something. <laughs> they know something. That's right. Right? Yeah. So that's my story about the trees because, uh, yeah, yeah. It's good. they've fallen on my roof. Yeah. My sidewalks, my lane. I couldn't even drive in my laneway. Coming back again after I pulled all the branches off to go out to come back, and I had to pull them off the the laneway again just to get back in. No, oh. so, what a mess. But, that is anyway. rough. What else would I do, eh? Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's so much free time. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Anyway, that's my story. And my other story is I'm nursing a wound here. Because every time I plug in this iPad, I have all my tools in holes, and I always jab a tool in my hand. Oh, <laughs> oh. oh. So anyway. whenever I'm spazzing out near my uh, mount wall back here, I'm always rubbing into some tool or stabbing myself with a skew on the wall. Yeah. Well, and they're so bloody sharp too, right? You don't even have oh. to touch them that hard. It just right. just graze. No. You just bump it. It's like. Yeah. Big yeah. cut. Anyway, what have you been yeah. up to? Yeah. Well, talking about the snow, it started yesterday, and uh, I was working until about 7 p.m. last night on the deer head, the big bust. It's finally happening. The one oh, how's it coming? Yes. I've been, I've been kind of, uh, you know, whatever you want to say, I've been, it has been in the, uh, in the shop waiting to be created for the past like I don't know nine months or ten months, but. Uh, it's going good. It's going well. Um, the shapes are coming in. The the forms are are there. You know, it's like my goal yesterday was to be done with refining the forms so that I can start adding detail. And uh, I'm pretty close. I think maybe I have a, a couple more hours of refining the forms. In other words, everything before you start worrying about setting the eyes, setting the nose detail, okay. setting the shit, you know, ear details and. So it's all kind of blocked in, but the shapes are pretty close to where they need to be. Um, I probably have a picture, but uh, you know, I'd be showing the camera my iPhone picture, which is not the best. But I'll do that really quickly. Um, I had a question for you. You're not yeah. there yet, but uh, you know, I know how you uh, when you do that kind of carving. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, I'll see this in the video too. But yep, looks like you're coming along. But yeah. Uh, when you're chainsaw carving, I know you do bears and stuff too. And the fur, how are you going to do the fur? Because you can't be that aggressive with the fur. Mm -hmm. You have any ideas on how you're going to do fine fur? Yeah. Well, there's different ways of doing it. I mean, there are guys that go in, you know, with a wood burner and they cut every single hair. And then there are people, there are feather, you know. And then there are people that use the cuts all carbide cutting heads to, to, uh, the real extreme ones to kind of create the illusion of hair, like the lines from the, from the teeth of the burr cut in the wood. And it kind of makes it look like hair, which okay. is pretty sweet. Um, and then, you know, other folks will just leave the deer smooth. They'll just smooth it out. So whether or not I'll go in and detail all the hairs individually, I don't know yet. I mean, I'll that probably would... try to pay attention to, to creating some flow with using the burrs and stuff yeah. and then light, light sanding. Um, but I'm more concerned about getting the shapes in the right way. And then as far as the finish, I don't know yet. I haven't decided. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, but I just know that. Cause I... He, he said, you know, get artsy with it. You know, it doesn't have to be look exactly like, like a deer's fur. Just, you know, the main thing is the antlers. He really wants those antlers to be right on. So for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. No, I just know that, uh, with a, you know, like a bear, you get really aggressive with the fur and you just use a chainsaw bar and knock it in and yeah. And this is a lot finer. So yeah. it's a lot finer. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. yeah, I probably, I'll just barely allude to it with a burr or something like that. That's my thought. You know, I've done that in the past with, with uh, deer bef before just using the burr, uh, and then sanding it, you know, a little bit of grain in there, but not a lot. So you can get away with smooth. The smooth looks pretty good. Yep. Yep. Um, but I, this week I've been in the shop here. Uh, early this week, Sam and I made a video together on knives. Uh, late last last minute, I think it was Tuesday night after the podcast. Um, 
we were we were in here. He came by to pick up some footage and sauna with the boys, and then we uh, we ended up making this knife video, and I was happy with the way that turned out. And then we just I just talked with him about how I want to start getting him in the shop more frequently, maybe like a couple of times a week. And so, so we'll see how that goes. We're going to give it a month, see how he, how he likes it and how I like it and uh, get him well, in here even more to help me. Let with, me interrupt you. With, uh, I hate blowing smoke all the time, but uh, I called you specifically because I watched your knife video and I said, oh, yeah. that was a well done video. Yeah. Thank you. That was like a professional quality video awesome the lighting the sound it was cool it's amazing it was really good i appreciate that yeah so yeah we 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 enjoy that by the way i don't want to do that again no i I doesn't feel feel right i don't i'm (laughs) (laughs) I'm soaking it in uh no yeah coming from you i you know and then i told you the compliments that come from you they mean more than from most so i do appreciate it but um i do uh yeah, Sam and I, we, we, all we did, you know, we just used the stuff that we have that I never, I always film with the iPhone for YouTube. So it was nice to pull out the stuff that I use for the school, the higher yeah. end gear and make a decent video with the, the, spend some time getting the lighting right and sound and everything. So yeah, but even I, the focus, I just don't have but, the time for that most of the time. So but have the Sam focusing here, issues you've had in the past yeah. were non-existent. Well, a lot of that's due to the the new camera. The autofocus has gotten so much better. Okay. You know? Okay. And if you're seeing autofocus issues in other videos, it's just going to be, it's just going to be from this. Okay. And it's going to be super minimal because this thing is great too. So it's got depth of field just like any other camera, and it's going to sense if your hand goes in front of the piece of wood, you know, it's going to focus on your hand. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but what's nice about this thing is you can crank the f stop up all the way so that the depth of field is super deep and then everything's in focus and it makes it a lot easier. So, but that's, that's guitar. Or I was going to say guitar nerd talk. That's camera nerd stuff, but um, I'm excited. I'm excited to try him out here and have him out here a little bit more, give him the opportunity to help. Um, but, but what's happened is with the releases on top of doing the commission work, uh, I feel like it's worth having someone in here to help me. And I, you know, I don't want to make my wife suffer. Um, you know, with like wrapping the carvings and, and getting them to the post office and getting all the packages. And these came in the mail yesterday because um, I've i been meaning to get to this for a while, for like a, a year, and I uh, are over that and uh, have a certificate of authenticity. Oh, wow. Um, so, you know, where you can name the carving. There's the edition t- details, the title, all that stuff. Um, of course, they're all going to be one of one for the most part, so – yeah well anyway so i'm doing an original carving release on friday so when this comes out um at noon so friday at noon eastern standard time will be the day <laughs> of the, will be yeah so people are like watching this too late but are you uh when you say noon do you mean noon or do you mean five o'clock <laughs> well that's uh, the other thing is trying to do it on my own was uh in my head piece of cake i'll just knock them all i'll have them all up on the internet but before noon yeah, yeah. And then I'm over here. It's 10 a.m. I'm still editing the pictures. I haven't even started making the post yet. Yeah. And, you know, it's like 2 p.m. or later before I get, get them up. And I have my neighbor over here helping me with editing. My wife's here. And so we're doing it all the day before. So tomorrow, yeah. Sam and I are going to be working on the photos. And yeah. so it'll be all done and ready to go by the morning. But yeah. we're going to wait till noon because people over on the, the western side of the state, they're not up they're, they're not necessarily up uh, in time to do anything earlier. So we want to give everyone an equal opportunity to yeah, get started because it seems like things have, you know, the way things went last time is some of the stuff moved pretty quickly. And so everything sold uh, with the exception of one on the last round. So, uh, but I've just, yeah, so I'm just cranking out carvings for that. You know, some of the stuff and the similar themes that I've done before, like kind of quirky, stylized Mm -hmm. stuff that i really love to make and then this one's going out to a guy from the last drop which is he's kind of fun oh yeah he's He's based on an old carving that i did when i was a kid a teenager and uh and then wood spirits and old people well i'm doing a bunch of older women this is not an older woman but kind of fun like uh 
old, older dude. That's fun. Green man, you can see that behind me and stuff like that. So it'll be a small release. It'll probably only be six or seven carvings as opposed to last month's, which was 12. But I just don't have uh, – I, I have too many commissions I'm focused on every day. I'm out there working on the deer or I'm trying to button up a design for the sauna or work on something related to commission. So this is just like when I have free time in the morning before I, before, as I'm waiting it for it to warm up outside, waiting for it to warm up outside. Uh, so how many are you trying to get out? I mean, I'll probably have six or seven. Yeah. One, two, three, four, oh, five, maybe yeah, one, two, three, four, five, maybe six or seven. I don't know. Yeah, we'll see. I'm in love with that older woman you carved. Which, oh, this one? She's a she's a good looking mature woman. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it. Yeah, she like she appreciates it too, you know? She's in a good looking, more mature man. Oh, <laughs> I can't invite you over before I put a clear coat on that. That's dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, well, that's anyway. Fun. So yeah, it is fun. It it's nice when you're you know when I, the beauty. I I should always. My brother has said this before, but I should always have a giant project to work on because it structures the rest of my day it's, it's uh -huh. so nicely. You know, it's like. I feel like it's kind of like your work in a way. You have a, bit, a thing that you do that takes up the majority of your day. That way, the other stuff is just icing on the cake, yeah. and it makes you more structured with your yep. with your life. So I I like having that big project as like my job, if you will, and then these as my fun things. Um, even though realistically, it's the other way around. It's yeah. it's it's really that. Uh, that the deer is like my experiment. The cre it's more creative because I've never done well, it. It's before. more of a challenge. It is. So yeah. here, here's a question. You mentioned the the one green man was based off a, a carving from your youth or an older carving. Mm. Do you have a, a, a library of photos mm. of your old stuff, or is that just memory? Um, yeah. So what happened was, I think I described it last week. I had a dormant page on my website that someone found through Google and they bought a carving from that dormant page that's somehow still live on my website, but just hiding. You can only oh. get to it if you have the URL. And so they went on there and they purchased order. I didn't even know it was up. I, I have to deactivate it. I still need to deactivate it. So, but there's this carving that I made when I was working in Detroit I had a studio in Detroit with my friend Brad at the time, and we were working together. He was a woodworker, and I had been doing uh, one carving a day there. And uh, this was a result of one of those projects that I had done there and uh, posted. So no, I, I have some. I have a website, and I've had that website for seven or eight years, but or maybe maybe not, maybe ten years or so. But uh, it's a funny story. I had a friend, and I was. Uh, in, walking into a coffee shop um, and saw saw this friend of mine and uh, I walked up to her and I said, hey, Leah, how are you doing? She's like, good. This is crazy. Look what I'm doing right now. And she turns her laptop around and she was like a web per, web designer and she was like, I'm building you a website. You know, Because I think at some point I had complained to her about how I need a website, but I haven't gotten around to it. And she, you know, nothing crazy, but just like a, a Squarespace website that she had kind of built where you drag and drop the photos. But it was yeah. really great, really nice. And I built, I finished building it out later that evening. And, um, and so, the, yeah, 10 years ago or so, I, I, I started to actually log the carvings I was making on my website. But that's pretty much it. Instagram, yeah. my website. So Do you have any pictures of your older stuff? I pretty much have my older stuff. Right. <laughs> I've never right. sold anything. But with True. you selling everything you have. True. You don't have a, a, a record, like maybe, but. But yeah, no. no. In the future, here, one more question for you. So the Squarespace, Squarespace mm -hmm. type website versus a properly made website. Mm -hmm. Am I too stupid to have a website? Unbelievably silly uh, how simple it is to run a website when you have. This is not Squarespace should sponsor us first of all. Okay, Squarespace, um, get on it. 
Yeah, get on it. But um, we should reach out to them. But yeah, it is really, it's like drag and drop. It's like, here's the box. You drag the picture. I mean, it's super easy stuff. I mean, it would take you about 15 minutes to learn the basics of it. Well, I'm just torn with the idea. If I ever were to start selling stuff, Mm -hmm. if you go to a site like Etsy versus Mm -hmm. your personal website, so you don't. The nice thing about Etsy is they take the taxes out for you. You don't have to pay That's a big one. That's right. I do enough of that. I don't need that. Yes. Okay. That's a big asset. Yeah, for sure. Um, it is. You know, and then the other, the, I guess the other downside is maybe they take a little bit more percentage wise. I'm not sure. Oh, yeah, I think they, they take a cut for the, the sale and whatnot. And, uh, but, but so does the payment service and so does your website. Yeah. So, so there you go. Okay. Cause I really even. don't want a website, but I, yeah. you gotta go through all the options, right? So, yeah yeah well yeah so yeah other than that deer uh getting ready for the launch on the third november 3rd on friday and uh day of this coming out and um getting salmon here that's pretty much that's what's been going on for the most part buttoning up carvings and yeah i've been honestly having a lot of fun in the shop as far as carving goes with the little bark ones and uh I like I like kind of like distorting things lately. It's fun. Yeah, yeah. So no, that's fun. Yeah. But that's pretty much it as far as uh, I mean. I could drag on, but uh, I got a pack. I'll say this: I had a package come in from Abby. Oh, I left it in the house. But uh, my buddy Abby Peterson, he's a world champion chainsaw speed chainsaw carver. You know, best in the world, best in class at speed chainsaw carving, and. Um, he uh he gave me this wood he was at i can't remember cayman islands or one one of the one of the an island near in near the united states he was asked to do uh a big bottle like chainsaw carve a big bottle Mm -hmm. for this rum company and he was told it would be in a wood that was carvable and so he showed up and sure enough it's this like tropical hardwood almost like a mahogany but i mean he sent me a couple blocks of it to see if I like carving it, but it felt more like a brick than it did a piece of wood. Yeah. And so it's beautiful red wood. So I appreciate him sending that, but it's it's going to be intense to carve. So I built a house in Bolivia mm-hmm. and they had, I don't even know what the name of the tree was, but they mm-hmm. had to sawmill the wood the day we used it so that we could drive nails into it. Because when it dried out, it was like as hard as a rock. Wow. And they were just, so they had, like, we were waiting on wood all the time as they milled it in the bush. And it was still juicy. And you get your nails in, get it built. And then even by the end of the week, you can see it was just hardening. And then, like, the nails were just locked in, like, hard as a rock. So, very interesting. But, yeah, there's lots of crazy woods out there. Yeah. Well, actually, on that note, we're uh, Sam and I. <clears throat> I just bought the uh, hardest wood known to man. It's this uh, Australian ironwood. Okay. And it's like to give you an example. Uh, I I did the hardest wood I've ever done uh, any large scale carving on was of this locust, uh, black locust. It's in the black locust, and that yeah. one's at around sixteen hundred on the Janka scale. And that's hard. I mean, that's that's really hard. Um, and uh, this wood is, I believe, it's right around six thousand. So, so the the goal for the video is to see if I can carve the hardest wood. What it's like to carve the hardest wood in the world that's with hand a, tools. So with hand tools. Yeah. So, what do you think is going to happen? You think that uh, your fine edge can't handle it? I'm going to use. I'm not going to use my precious uh, Addis. So I'm just going to find some old beat up tools, sharpen them up. And yeah, because yeah. I worry that it'll chip the edge of the blade. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. a pine knot will take a chunk out of a chisel. Right. Exactly. And this is going to so, be a hard all the way through. Well, good yeah. luck on that video. I have Thanks. Had, uh, <laughs> and I'll see you, Alec, in the corner with his, his little Dremel buzzing in the wood (laughs) (laughs) yeah look it's easy for me (laughs) you can too yeah Yeah, piece of cake i already get that enough with my basswood your wood's so (laughs) soft mine's so hard but Mm -hmm. anyway so 
Yeah. What about you, Doug? What have you been up to lately? Well, it has been a very interesting week. So mm. I'm going to read you a story. Yeah. <laughs> I got my spectacles. So, Jan, John Linker was born on March 20th, 1934 at home in Ain, the Netherlands, to mm. Trinko and Jantje Linker. Imagine having a name, Trinko. Trinko, wow. Trinko and Jantje. He was the middle child of nine. His family immigrated to Canada when he was still in his teens and was taught the value of hard work. He took mm. a special interest in his neighbor, who was also his English tutor, Helen, which is my mother. Hmm. They were married on July 9th, 1960, and they spent 62 wonderful years together until God called Helen home on May 30th last year. They enjoyed spending time together, whether it was traveling, visiting with family, friends, or just having tea. He missed her deeply every day for the past year and a half. John took various jobs as a carpenter throughout his working years. In his spare time, he enjoyed creating wood gifts for his grandchildren, birdhouses, and anything else that could be made from wood. Hmm. Isn't that funny? Wow. His hobby farm, Tiny Acres, housed many critters and birds, and he completed his working career as a caretaker of Bethel Baptist Church. In retirement, he could often be found puttering in his workshop or appreciating the beauty of his birds. John hmm. and Helen, this is the best part. John and Helen were blessed with four angelic sons. <laughs> <laughs> who wrote this? Hey, who wrote this? We all wrote it. The, the boys, we were laughing our heads off, and they provided many years of entertainment and kept them on their knees in prayer. John instilled in his sons his value of hard work and deep faith in Christ. His legacy lives on through his family. Andy Brian Grant, I love it. John yeah. lived eighty-nine years with. Anyway, the the moral of the story is: uh, yesterday we buried my father. Yeah. So. I'm an orphan. Orphan. Wow. Orphan Doug. So. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm sorry that I've said it before already, but I'm, yeah, I'm sorry about that. So, yeah. What a week, man. Crazy. Yeah. 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 Anyway, that uh, we got through the, uh, well, well, they give the, 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 he, he died fairly quickly in the yeah. end. Like, I think last podcast that I talked about him being in the hospital and taking yep. care of him. And then just a couple of days after that, it just, we started taking shifts and then he went palliative, which, what did you say was the equivalent to you? When I say palliative, you say... Oh, hospice. Hospice. So anyway, mm -hmm. maybe uh, 15 hours and he was gone. Oh, so wow. and then we got that. So, no, yeah. it, uh, yeah. it, is, it is. I'm happy for him. <laughs> so it, yeah. He, yeah. he, his, his work was done. You know, I, mm -hmm. we were talking about it, and this is not a brag. And I don't mean to be like, it's just, if I say it, it sounds bad, but sure. imagine having uh, four sons mm. all standing around you, great families, grown up, all done fairly well. You know, you, you did a good job. Yeah. So, what, yeah, what more, you know? Yeah. And uh, like I said, he did. He missed mom every day for the last year and a half. So mm -hmm. it's good. Yeah, so. it is good. Yeah, and it's 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 also – how old was he? 89. Wow. That's, so, you know, they're good dudes. <laughs> he would have been 90 in March. Now, I've, I've shared this before that we share the same birthday. And I've always joked every year uh, – I said uh, every year. I always say, "Well, maybe next year I'll get my own birthday." <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> Terrible! I and, hope he's watching this up in heaven right now, yeah. just going Douglas. Well, you know, because <laughs> all the brothers and families, like it was always like Dad's birthday. Oh, and Doug's, right? <laughs> so, Is it man, really? You actually do share a birthday? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was the best bir birthday present he ever got. With the but uh, anyway, yeah, it's not so funny now. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, so that'll be different. Yeah. But. Well, won't it? Yeah, because then it's always yeah. Hot, wow, yeah. So your birthday kind of changes, doesn't it? Yeah. So anyway, great. So I yeah. don't, not to be a Debbie Downer here. I just yeah. uh, I wanted to read that because it's funny reading that. It's like that's who I am. Like 
it's just I'm just a little mini a mini Jan John. Jan is his Dutch name, and in Canada they switched it to John J O H N. Mm-hmm. So, but his legal name is is Jan. Um, mm. is a birth certificate. So, mm. yeah. yeah, yeah. But so as far as carving goes, <laughs> I have done nothing. Mm-hmm. Nothing whatsoever. Yeah. yeah. Had uh, had our hands full, and and well, again, now we got to, we got to clean out his stuff and move on. So, yeah, we and, cleaned up the farm last last year. We spent cleaning up the farm, so this will be a lot easier job now with the, yep, the part. I was going to say. So, yeah, you know, that's good. That's good. But oh, I I can go off on a little tangent. Yeah, you're talking about the black locust. Mm-hmm. So we were the boys we were walking around the the property that we got to keep and uh we got all these black locusts about this big and they're uh yeah we got a line of them along the creek and whatnot but anyway we planted them too as little whips Mm -hmm. from a government program so it's so fun to to retain that property and i planted those trees with my dad so there's always gonna you know it's always there you know like He's always there with all the memories and the property remains in the family and yep. we're, bu- we're building more trails. And, uh, in fact, we did, uh, me and my brother, Andy, we finished the, uh, another trail in the bush along the river. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's cool. But my thought was, I love carving trembling Aspen. Hmm. Some call it quaking Aspen There's different names, but. You've seen me uh, carve lots of these. Well, even these, even these little these little guys are all that's trembling aspen. Mm. My favorite wood to carve green, and it dries without cracking. And uh, I just had this brainwave, and then I went off on a tangent and researched it. <laughs> Avalanche, <laughs> get back up there, oh. guys! Don't um, stab yourself again. No, but uh, I researched. I said to myself. Hey Doug, why can't I plant myself a grove of trembling aspen? Mm. Mm-hmm. I can have a self-sustaining carving, like, like carving wood. Mm-hmm. Like when you when you cut them down, even with their little whips, like two inch or whatever, you cut them down, they sucker off and go again. Right. And I could have a continual year after year, non like surplus of carving yeah. wood it's a really fun idea yeah because you don't want actually them to be that big the, the branches no. or the no. trees themselves and they'll keep sprouting up in place right when you yeah. cut them you think yeah and then i had other thoughts of letting some grow and then carving a face in it and then letting them start to heal yeah before i cut them yeah and i was just just mulling that over going that's a that's, that's a fun idea it is it wouldn't yeah very very cool to see what that what that looks like what happens with that wouldn't it yeah so i'm gonna keep uh looking into that and i can't order any trees until the spring mm-hmm. but i mean we got piles of land I, how many how many would you need like right. 50 would be overkill even it'd be a but lot be cool it would look cool right that'd so, be fun that was my little side uh <laughs> brain venture so. Yeah, and then it would be neat to see you carving in the in the forest, you know, with those trees around you. Well, I think I would. I don't think I would plant them in the forest. I think I'd probably keep a little grove just outside oh. of the forest. Okay. Yeah. And uh, just kind right. of keep, that way they can sprout up, right? Yeah. And see the together. Smell. Don't I don't want them crowded out by the other trees or exactly. reaching too much for the sun. So that's a good. I call. think we have uh, I don't know, fourteen acres of of like pasture field that. Yeah, can, they like. Uh, I think they like their toes a little bit wet too. So we do have a little wet, wetter area too. So anyway, right. I'm gonna keep uh, following that line. Yeah, see. there you go. You you should name it after your pop, the forest. Yeah, well, <laughs> the the farm is called Tiny Acres. It always has been. Oh, there you go. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. So, but that's that's about it. I mean, really, oh, yeah. that's enough. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah well i mean yeah when stuff like that happens it kind of wipes out your, your week for sure i can't imagine i've never ha- i mean yeah so let me tell you uh mm. the folks that are watching and listening 
if you have daughters, be very thankful. Hmm. We were so terrible. <laughs> the four boys everywhere we went and the, the joking and the goofing off and the it was just <laughs> we're dealing with funeral home people and, oh, and the, how, how many drafts were there of that? Oh, uh, so many. So yeah. many things didn't get written down either, but we were just <laughs> laughing our heads off. Like, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Dad, dad would have loved it, but uh, oh man, we were terrible. Right. Oh, because everybody's always nervous. <laughs> yeah. You know, and understand, you know, I understand, but uh, we were just, it was terrible. But, mm. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, be thankful for the uh, for the, the daughters in your family to write your eulogy, not your sons. Don't let your sons do that. Yeah, no, brother Andy, uh, of course, he's the eldest, mm. A, B, C, D. Mm -hmm. And uh, he said, well, who's doing it? I said, no, it's still your job. <laughs> That's your birthright. You he got did a good that. job, though. Yeah, he yeah. did a fantastic job. Yeah. So, That's not the eulogy. He wrote another one that was even, it was funny. It was Really? Just, yeah, it was really good. Wow. So, that's great. Yeah. Well, that's awesome that that your dad had that uh, was honored in that way too by your brothers and your older brother. That's cool. So, yeah. my brother, he he's so shy. You know, he 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 had a hard time. He didn't speak at our wedding because he's just a really shy dude. So I don't know what's going to happen when our parents. I mean, the, obviously my parents are young, so not anytime soon, but. You know, if if they uh, exceed, if if we exceed them, um, which is the way it typically goes, what that'll look like, I don't know because uh, that'll be on me for sure. <laughs> Listen, people always say to me, "Well, you can do that. You can do that." Like you talk to all these thousands of people all the time, and I always tell them, "I said, if you put ten people in front of me, or if I know that I have to speak to ten or twenty people." Yeah, I'll be sick for a day before my guts oh. would be in knots. <laughs> I am so not made for yeah up in front of people. I, that's what I always said. I never, I never even thought I'd, I'd be this far here on this stuff. And uh, yeah. like, I don't need you to know who I am. I'm just farm boy, carpenter, and I yeah. don't want to. I don't want to be up in front of people. Like, right. But anyway, yeah, I would be sick. If I knew I had to do that, I wouldn't sleep. Right. right. <laughs> I'd be such a yeah. nervous Nelly. Yeah, I get that. Well, but, isn't that like next to dying? Isn't that like America's number one fear is public speaking? Oh, for sure. Yeah. 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 So, and I can see why. I don't know. I don't, I, I don't think I fear it quite to the extent that you do, but I don't, I yeah. don't like it. I never want, I don't look forward to it. Even no. church announcements. They, they sent me an email to do church announcements and I hit no. There was like yes or no, and I hit no. And then it sent me to some link somewhere, and I was like, "What is this?" And so I just left it alone, thinking they would get the idea. And then I got to church, and they were like, "You ready to do announcements?" And I said, "Are you serious?" <laughs> and, I, and they said, "Yeah, we sent you an email." And I said, yeah, "I don't think so. I, I got a yes or no." But they're like, "No," and we sent you the script. And I was like, "No, you didn't." They're like, "Yes, we did." <laughs> okay. I'm not doing it, so go away. <laughs> no, but no. I would, yeah. That's that's even that's kind of rough. No, thank you. So, but yeah, I mean, I, I'm not. I don't think I'm terrified of it. I just don't like it. So, but yeah, it's 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 never fun to get in front of people. No. So, no. yeah, we're gonna introduce the. Uh... I don't think we have a topic this week. It's uh, we don't really have a topic, do we? No. We could make one up. We could hit, we'll see what comes out of the mailbag. There you go. Let's do that. Mailbag. <laughs> there you go. Bam. <laughs> <laughs> Peter wants to know. Quick question about wood. I know it's phrased kind of funny here, but what is that bark really that you, where you carve? Okay. I think you just meant what, what it's is the, really bark? Yeah. It's really bark. That's what it really is. It's bark, yeah. bark, Cot cottonwood bark outside of the tree protects the wood and the inside bark. It's just yeah. really thick bark. Look at that. 
it's big. So I, you know what I was looking at? Uh, we have cottonwoods. We this morning we call it poplar here, mm-hmm. but uh, I was looking at the bark, and the bark's only like on, on a massive tree. The mm-hmm. bark pieces are about that wide. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, just tiny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Most of that from out west. Yeah. Yep. That's it. Uh, Shawnee wants to know uh, the gold woman. If she goes on clearance, she wants dibs. Yeah. Okay. I'll let you know. <laughs> I, mean, I did reduce. I think I had the price at like eight hundred, and I brought it back down. So to uh, to a lower price for folks. And uh, so I guess I did. So there's your there's your alert. If it's still up, I don't know if it's still up. That's the last one though. So but anyway, her quest her her bigger question was uh, how. I'm wondering how do you determine the price? Do you, do you do it from like an hourly rate or materials and then kind of go from there? Or is it just each one is individual? How, how do you know about pricing your work? You know, my pricing hasn't uh, changed all that much in the past. Um, I don't know, say seven years, six, seven years. Um, but I will say it's, it's it's pretty well. I mean, it's probably in, increased marginally, but I do not go based on hourly rate because you know you would either shortchange yourself half the time, and then or, you know, or, or some of the time, and then the rest of it you would be overpaying yourself. You know, it's it's just it's more about how satisfied you are with the carving because yeah. I could make a carving like this, you know, in two or three hours. And if I'm charging, you know, 20 bucks an hour, I'm not making anywhere near what I need to make. Right. So, I mean, I'm making 60 bucks. Right. So it's, it's, uh, and the carving is inherently worth a lot more than that. So, um, I generally, you know, and then say for instance, on something like this, I might spend 12 or 15 hours and then I'm making less than what I want to make on it. So, I'm not saying that making twenty dollars an hour. Obviously, I'm not I'm making more than that. But um, I, 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 I just kind of go based on uh, the my a combination of two things: the track record that I have. I I do something uh, when I am testing out prices. I'll do the what I call the Dutch auction method, which is actually it's not what I call that. It's it's what it's called. It's it's where you start with a high price, and then you lower, because most people. Um, they don't, uh, interestingly enough, it's a lot harder to increase a price than it is to decrease it. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right. So you don't want to start, you know, you don't want to start at 50 bucks for a carving and then go, oh boy, you know, that was, I way, way undersold that one. I'll make the next one, you know, 700 bucks. That's just way too inconsistent. Yeah. I think what you got to remember is it's not like, uh, you're painting a house. Or you're or you're tilling a field, whatever. Like the hourly rate is not based upon the labor; it's the mm-hmm. ability, right? Yep. yep. Like it's taken ten years or whatever to learn something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, it's a that's why you, you get you should be paid. It's not it's not a labor wage. Yeah. Should be a skill right. wage, right? So, right, exactly. A skill. That's a great way of putting it. It's a late, it's a skill wage. Yeah. So. Yeah. But what? Yeah. But that aside, though, what other world is there that you have an idea of a price in your mind for something, but you'll go back and spend another hour because you're an artist, yeah, and you want those extra details just to make yourself happy. <laughs> Absolutely. That, that's all I've been doing today. I was supposed to go out and work on the deer. And all I've been doing is going back over these carvings that I showed you and buttoning them up. And they're not worth any more. And I know in my head, no one's going to pay more because I spent those 12 hours or eight nope. hours carving on them. No. Nope. It's a personal thing. Yep. Yeah. And mm-hmm. you just can't let it go until you just got to get your little yep. finished stamp on it. Yeah. So, yep. But uh, the packaging for this release, they're gonna, it's going to be a lot sexier than last time. I'll tell you that because uh, no more subs from – no more Subway uh, wood carvings. That's for sure. <laughs> I've got this really cool – I'll show it to you. I've got this really cool paper. Let 
that uh, right. This is the wrapping paper, right? It's just it's just a sheet of paper, but it's perforated, and so when you pull on it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yep. Yeah. yeah, I've had things come in that before. It's really fun. Yeah, isn't it? When you pull on it, it turns into a. Uh, the, the paper stands on end, and then it, it gets thicker, and it actually pads the carving or pads whatever you wrap it in. Have so. you ever had uh, something mailed to some super hot place, and that you waxed it or something, and had something sticking to it? No, nope. not that I know of. No one's complained to that, at least. Do you know what I'm saying? Like if yeah, uh, right, that would be a, a well, that's where the good. finish kind of comes off on the. Yeah. yeah. No, no. The, I use. I try to use good, really high end finishes that don't come off. So. Yeah. But, right. Uh, Peter wants to know uh, where he can get a coffee mug with the trees on it, or the T-shirt of the show. We used to have merch last year. We right. never got back to it. No. Do we need to? Well, you guys let us know if we need to. Yeah. Yeah, we'll do it. We we don't want to do it unless folks want it. So if you guys want it, then make a fuss and we'll do it. Where are we at here? But we're open to it. We'll do it. Yeah. Mark wants to know, hey, guys, I think it's safe to say that you both have quite a passion for carving. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Yeah. Question for both of you. What is the oh here's this is a good question. What's the longest time you've gone without carving anything? And was it out of necessity or did you just need a break from it? Or both? I'll go. I'll go. Uh last summer I basically took a month off. And maybe I did a little bit of carving, but I never focused on anything. I right. was doing different work and why did I do that? I did that because I had lots of other stuff to do and mm -hmm. I did need a break. There is a burnout, not from the hobby of carving, but the the producing of the videos and, and whatnot yep. that, that kind of has gone hand in hand with what I've been doing. That's why I talked about last week. I need to do stuff for me again. Yep. But uh, so, yes, it was a it was a good time to take a break. Because nobody watches videos in the summer, and right. uh, and I needed one, so yeah, that's my story. How about you? So he was asking, have you ever needed to take a break or carving? What, what, what's the longest you've gone without carving anything, and why? Basically, oh, hmm. So let's see, it would have been, let's see, it would have been 20. So I went back to college a couple of times and I did not have very much time to carve, but I do, for the most part, I did try and carve at least once a week. But that was it. Yeah. Um, there have to be there have to be like a, a time where I spent, uh, you know, a greater amount of time than that. But I can't think. Yeah, well, not more than a couple of weeks uh, for a trip or a vacation or something. I don't yeah, think. that's what you're gonna say. That is your job. So it's basically you can have a holiday. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I went to school, and during that time, there were times where I was in school where I carved very, very little, very, very little. Um, mm -hmm. Again, maybe once a week for a couple of hours here and there. I was, you know, I was seventeen credit hours. Um, yeah, but even during those times, I was working on commission stuff. So I don't know. That's tough. I, it's my job, you know. So yep. all right, that's fine. Uh, we got some nice comments and, and whatnot. And uh, oh, here's a uh, Chris in Port Angeles bought three coffees. Oh. Thanks, Chris. Chris, yes, appreciate that. It's Thank wonderful. you. But yeah, other than that, I think uh, we've cleared that out, which is nice. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, I think it's that time. What do you think? That time.
media. Media. I again, I'm going to fall short on this, but uh, I do have something. Yeah. If anybody follows boxing at all, there was a there was a fight on the weekend. It was Tyson Fury, who is what they call. Oh yeah, I heard about that. The lineal champ. I guess that means he's a heavyweight champ right across the board. Yeah. He fought a fellow named uh, Francis Nagano. Francis, I think that sounds right. Who had never boxed before. He, he trained, he was from the MMA world, and mm-hmm. then he came over to boxing to fight Tyson Fury. And everyone thought that he didn't have a hope. And uh, long story short, is that he basically won the fight, but technically there was some bad judging and he lost the fight. And from that point on, all I've been doing is watching everyone's opinion videos about that fight <laughs> <laughs> and how Francis got robbed in the fight. So wow, it was a uh, it was good. Francis has a fantastic story. He grew up in Africa, digging in the mines by hand, and uh, I don't know his whole story of how he got over here, but he's just just a monster. But he's just uh, now like from the poorest of the poor to the highest of the high and it's just an amazing incredible journey so wow yeah that guy's jacked yeah Holy but, uh, yeah anyway it was a uh, yeah he's a big boy he is 258 pounds wow <laughs> these guys are heavyweights but tyson like uh yeah like I said, no one thought he had a chance, but uh, yeah, he proved everybody wrong. And uh, like I said, there's hundreds, if not thousands, of people crying foul on the internet and the videos and, and analyzing the fight and whatnot. So that's that's kept me going when I had time. So that's yeah. about all I got, really. Yeah. Well, you've been you've had a lot going on. So. Yeah. So how about you? You got anything? so funny because I, uh, the algorithm must be pushing MMA or something because I was, I went down the same old rabbit trail. I, I'm not a big MMA fighter guy. Like I don't watch it all the time, but when I do, or I watch the Khabib uh, McGregor fights, <laughs> I love watching, uh, Nurma, what is his name? Nurma Gamadov or whatever. Khabib. Yep. Yeah. The two fights when I'm in a bad mood or I'm feeling down, the two <laughs> fights that I always go and watch are Holly Holm versus Ronda Rousey <laughs> yeah, yeah. and Habib versus McGregor. Right. Because I love to see the bully get their head smashed. Yeah. And that just makes me so happy. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's so nice. So good. Yeah. Both of those instances, they're both humble mm-hmm. people versus mm-hmm. loudmouth, trash talking, you know, hype. Yeah. I, I know they're hyping up the fight. I understand. Yeah. Yep. But I always root for the uh, the quiet, confident ones that say, mm-hmm. okay, we'll see. Yep. We'll see. They don't have to say nothing. They just <laughs> say, we'll see. And then Khabib beating his beating this cocky guy's face in, saying, "Let's talk now." Yep, <laughs> you know? that's just the I love it. I absolutely love it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I was telling you, I I saw that that fight you told me about the Molly fight and uh, uh, Ronda Molly fight night. Holly, yeah, Holly. Oh, that was that was intense. It's brutal watching women fight. It, it's. Something within me, I haven't seen it a lot, but when I see it, I'm like, oh no, somebody send some dudes in there to break up that. <laughs> Not to be sexist, but you don't, I don't, it's, I don't know, it's weird. There's a philosophy to it, though. I was not excited at first, I'll be honest, when yeah. they were bringing in the women. And yeah. now, now I'm a fan. Really? They are fast, and they are good. Yeah. And yep. it took a while to be, like, it took a while to build the division. Mm-hmm. With the best fighters. That's why Ronda was so good because she was just fighting people who were not at that level. Like they really had to build up the level of the division. Right. And uh, yeah, but to now I'm a big fan. They're great. Hmm. Yeah. Well, some of these women are brutes. They're pretty. They're big, big yeah. thick, strong. Oh, you know, big muscles. Unfortunately, I can never start my life again. But if I could, I would. Uh, I would go right down that MMA path as you really? start young. Yeah. 
Yeah. I had my son doing it too. And uh, he's great. doing it. I love it. Well, he was. Yeah. Okay. He's older yeah. now too. He's probably too old now too. So, but, yeah. Yeah. We used to go together. That's fun. More of the Muay Thai stuff. But yeah, it really? was, I, I love it. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. That's cool. That's something that uh, I, I fell out of when I was young too. So I didn't really, this, the, the, I did the Kung Fu stuff, like the Ken Po, which is like the street fight, the street fighting Kung Fu. Yeah. Uh, you know, a lot of like disarming people with weapons and stuff like that, you know. So. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, now speaking of being an old man, my old mm -hmm. man uh, hobby of pickleball seems to have been ended, but with the snow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> True. Yeah. So. You got to find a new winter hop. Oh, wood carving. I should try but, wood carving. But in all seriousness, I was so excited to go into the shop today because of the snow. Yeah. Is it just me or is winter the best time to carve? I, well, I don't know. Like, I love winter. Mm -hmm. I love Christmas. And mind you, I shoveled a lot of snow today. Yeah. I got to get back in shape for that too. <laughs> but I, I, I'm a fan of winter. Yeah. Like everybody can't wait for summer. Can't wait for summer. Mm -hmm. You could take summer right out of the, the seasons and I'd be fine. Yeah. I love fall. I love yep. spring. Mm -hmm. and winter but uh, i don't need summer at all i don't mm -hmm. need heat waves and yeah no oh, thank you yeah but there's definitely something warm and comforting about wood carving in the winter oh just the I, best. My, my dream here's my dream let me tell you mm -hmm. i would love to have well basically what you have a little whittling cabin mm -hmm. with a wood stove mm -hmm. you tend the wood stove a little bit of carving Tend yeah. the wood stove, pot of coffee on the wood stove, and that would be a dream. Yep. I love that. That's how it is back at my parents. That old wood stove keeps the coffee mugs warm. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. I Which thought about it here. That the main reason I didn't is it's space. I didn't want to take – it's so little space in here. You know, it's, it's a small you, room. You should go on a tangent on the Cubit, C-U-B-I-T, Cubit mm -hmm. mini wood stove. Yep. People put those on their buses, on their on their their RVs and like their minivan. Tiny RVs. cabins, tiny houses, RVs. Uh, mm -hmm. Forestie Forest has one in his van. Wow, the wood stove that's this big. Yep, so fun looking. That would be kind of neat to put in here, wouldn't it? I yeah. might take it a different route too. Like I've been looking at plans and different things about what to build in the bush, and. Uh, a tree, a carving treehouse would be fun with a wood stove. Oh, that'd be so cool! Would oh, that be sweet? That'd be so cool. Oh, what is it called? A cubit, cubic, cubit, 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 cubic, or cubit, cubit mini wood stove? They're made in Canada. Cubic mini wood stove. There it cubic is. Cubic wow. with a C. I see. Cubic. Well, mini wood stoves. Let's see. Oh, so it goes on the ground. It does. I thought they mounted to the wall. Yeah, you can mount it to the wall. Measures only eleven by twelve by ten and a half. Wow. Yeah. The only downside is is that either you got to set an alarm and get up in the middle of the night and put a chunk of wood in because yep. you can't maintain like like at my house here. Like I put wood in at night, damper it down, and uh, fire it up. We're going in the morning instantly, but that burns out. You can't hold a fire overnight in a little tiny stove. Well, you know, it would be nice to have this as a supplement to the electric stuff that we I have going in here. So, yeah. but yeah, it's but, uh, people, especially uh, so close to your house too. You might have insurance issues. Who knows? But maybe so. Yeah. But oh, well, very cool. Very good. <sighs> I'm glad we did this. We we discussed not doing it and. Uh, it's good. It's good to get back and do it. Get yeah. Back do things. Absolutely. I'm glad you decided to do it too, man. If you keep playing for another 30 seconds, we'll have a, an hour on the button. <laughs> <laughs> Zach.
six, five, four, three, two, one. There you go. <laughs> Thanks for hanging out with us, everybody, and uh, we'll catch you next week on the Coffee and Carving Show. Email your questions, topic ideas, whatever you want to coffeeandcarvingshow at gmail.com. And uh, we will do our best to respond in the appropriate timeline. Yeah. And uh, take your vitamins. Yeah. I guess. <laughs>